Welcome to Off the Ranch. Uh, a few weeks ago I made a video about mine and Meredith's first house that we ever bought and how we lived in it for a few years and we turned it into a rental property. I talked about how much money we made off that house as a rental property and it did really good for us, which made us want to buy this house two years ago just as a rental property. Meredith and I never actually lived in this house. We bought it. Uh, this is the crack house. There's a whole series of it on YouTube. On this channel is a playlist called Renovating a Crack House. This is the crack house and we have actually used it as a rental since we fixed it up. We've had it for two years now. Let's go inside and check it out. Actually, now that I think about it, we had tenants in it for two years. We actually have owned this house for like two years and three or four months, I think. We spent three or four months fixing this house up, flipping it, because it was in interesting shape. We did a lot, it looks great now, and in the last video where I was showing you my other house, I told you why I love having rental properties and why I wanna keep that house forever. And in this house, I'm gonna show you why I wanna sell it. But first, let me show you around. This is the front entry room, kind of a dumb little room that you can't really do anything with uh, besides just put decorative things in, but it's nice to have. People do like that kind of thing. High ceilings, and there's a loft up there. Let's run upstairs. This loft we moved in had disgusting carpet. We put tile in here because we wanted this thing to be a rental property forever, and we thought tile would last a lot longer than if we just replaced the carpet. So. This is a little area that someone could make an office or a little kid hangout area. Basically a flex space, just to give you a little extra room if you need to get away from the main house. Nice little dining room, actually a really nice dining room. They have nice wood ceilings in here, just like they do all up there, which is a big selling point of this house. When we bought it, we call it a crack house, and we're not joking. It was disgusting, we found needles, we found there were cigarettes everywhere. It was just gross, but the bones of the house are pretty good. Like it's a nice looking house, so really all we had to do was clean up and fix little things and made this house really nice. Also new air conditioner, so not everything was little. Kitchen, we painted all of this and we stained the countertops. The cabinets were just wood colored, the countertops were the same color, those were the same color, everything and it actually matched the floor. So it was all just the same and just looked bad. So we made all of that white, white, darker, darker floor, matched it all, this also was the same wood, everything was just light brown and just looked, even I could tell, looked kind of silly. So we fixed this up. I think this kitchen looks bomb now. Little step down here, a little small balcony with a couple steps going down into the living room. Nice big living room, plenty of room for TV and couches and whatever else you need to do in your living room. There was also cheap, yucky, just, just not nice looking vinyl flooring down here. We ripped it all out, put tile in here because we wanted it to last forever. Also, interesting fact, Nothing in this house is square. You can see the tile was put in square, but the walls angle in, so you can see how that tile is just getting closer to the wall. That was not the tiler's fault. That's whoever framed this wall. The walls angle in like that for some reason. Also, the slab dips down toward the back down there. It's, it, it, there's like a three inch drop from this side of the room to that corner of the room. Don't know why, it's pretty unnoticeable when you're using it, but if you put a ball on the ground, it will definitely roll over there. This is a three bedroom house. This, I would say, is the master, because it's the biggest room. Has a nice big closet. Mary's and I, tile everywhere in here. We put that fixture up, we put that fixture up. Second bedroom in here, still pretty good size. Tile everywhere, beautiful closet. We put that fixture up. All the fans in this house were like, the blades were all droopy, and just, it was just a sad looking junky house. Bathroom, number one over here, and bedroom number three. We put a doorknob on it, because when we bought the house, it just had a deadbolt. There's actually more to the story than I've even told y'all, because I can't say it, because it is not PG, uh, the stuff that we found in this house. Interesting stuff, it was, yeah, it was, it was, it was bad. Understairs closet. Could double as a bedroom if you had a kid you don't like. Tile in here, hardwood floors in here. We, we didn't do that, we just restained them. Bathroom, 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 closet. Nice big closet. Shower around the corner. We put a lot of work in the shower because it was disgusting. Oh, we got a leak. Yeah, this faucet's still leaking. So we need to work on that. But it was gross and we pulled the tile out and the pan was rotten out too so we had to pull that out, rebuild it all. So the house is nice, but it's kind of weird because that last bedroom that I just took you in has its own bathroom. 
But the biggest bedroom in the house, which is the one I showed you right there, this is a bedroom and this is a bedroom, that's the biggest bedroom in the house, but there's no bathroom attached to it. So they have to walk all the way over here to this bathroom, which is shared by this bedroom, also shared by anyone who comes over to your house. So the biggest bedroom should be the master, and that's why I was kind of weird about this. This is probably the master, should be the master, but the master also should have the best amenities, like a bathroom attached to it. And so this house is sort of weird in that regard that the layout is strange because the biggest bedroom has no bathroom attached to it. So if you're the parents moving into a house, you usually put the kids in smaller bedrooms and the parents in the big bedroom. But in this house, you have to decide do we, the parents, want to live in the big bedroom but have to share a bathroom with the whole house? Or do we want to live in this smaller bedroom right here, which is still a good size, but it is smaller. But then you have your own bathroom back there. One weird kind of layout. It's not that bad. And I mean, people all used to live in this house for a while and we've rented it for two years to people and they stayed for an extra year. They didn't have any complaints, I guess. But it's just not perfect. It's not the perfect layout. And there is a decent sized backyard where you could have a medium sized dog back here and there's plenty of room to roam, which is nice. Maybe you are. One other sort of downside is there is no garage. There is a carport, but it is only a carport, not a truck port, because it is very low. But there's this kind of lean-to on the side of the house where you can decide if you want to park your car in there. Car will fit. Um, or you can use it as just like a hangout covered porch area. We could have chairs and stuff over here. Another little side yard over there with a little garden shed to keep your lawnmower and stuff in over there. So it has pretty much everything. It's near perfect. It's not perfect, but it's not far off. Oh, laundry room. I forgot. Laundry room in here. Meredith and I put this crazy tile in there. Looking good and AC unit. We did replace the air conditioner. Cause when we bought it, this house would only get down to like 80 degrees on a shady day. Not good enough in Texas. Sometimes tenants can totally wreck a house. And I talked to you about my other rental house and I was talking about how awesome the tenants are. And you guys were like, yeah, but that's, that's not always the case, Matt. Sometimes tenants destroy a house. True, that's a risk you take with having a rental property. So the other house though, we had our good friends staying in it. So we trusted they were gonna take care of it, and they did. They took immaculate care of it. They treated that house like it was their own. They lived in it for four years when they finally moved out and moved on. And it was awesome to go back in that house and see it all beautiful and sparkly and shiny and ready for new tenants to move in, which they have. We have another set of friends who actually just moved into that house a few days ago. So it is generating income for us again. Now this house I was a little worried about because we rented it to people we did not know. I actually never even talked to them because I wanted to not have to deal with it and I thought I'm gonna use a property manager to do this one. So I got a property management company and they came in, found tenants, put them in this house and I just got a monthly check. And so I was worried after two years of not seeing this house, what I was gonna walk into. And I was pleasantly surprised. Uh, I don't even think we're gonna have to repaint. Like it is, Nice, it needs some cleaning. There's a couple like normal wear and tear things, like tiny, like a drawer needs a little work, that kind of stuff. Normal stuff, nothing else really needs attention. All, everything still works, the roof's still good, the AC's cranking, like perfect. It worked out really good. These tenants also were great tenants and I'm hoping that we continue to get great tenants in rental properties in the future because it is so nice and it would be really sad if you came in, there's like holes in the wall. And, junk like that. I don't know, I haven't been there. I've only had good tenants so far. I know it does happen, but so far, we've been lucky. Literally, as I'm talking though, I feel that. That's a flea, and that's a flea crawling up my leg. So we need to put a bug bomb in here. That's it, that's just a bug bomb. They just had fleas, no big deal. Hey, we're gonna do the rest of the review back here in the side yard. Uh, has nothing to do with the, few more fleas that I found crawling on me after I started looking. No, not, nothing at all, it, it's totally fine. It's fine. Um, we're just out here in the yard just chilling. I'm, I'm in the side yard, uh, not necessarily because I assume there's probably less dogs that would have been in the side yard as we're in the backyard that's totally fenced. It's not because I'm trying to hide from anywhere where dogs may have been dropping flea eggs everywhere. It's totally irrelevant. But look, they planted flowers in that little flower pot next to the window. Totally makes up for the fleas. So besides the little flea infestation, which I'm not worried about at all, I'm a veterinarian. I've killed millions of flea in my day. And I'm not worried about that. I can, I can handle that. Besides that, Matt, you have a nice house with a two-year-old air conditioner, 
so it's probably not gonna break for a while. A nice roof that doesn't need anything, nice paint on the outside, nice paint on the inside, floors are good. This house is, besides fleas, move-in ready. Why then are you wanting to sell it instead of letting it continue to generate income for years to come. To explain that, I'm going to break it down, kind of like I did in the other video. Two years ago, Meredith and I purchased this house for $240,000. Now, this house was in rough shape. It needed a lot of little things, a lot, but they're all little things. And so our improvements, which the big ones were AC, tile, and then fixtures around the house, we put about $20,000 into this house to flip it, to make it go from ugh, to ah, that's pretty nice. I'm like freaking out, I feel like I can just feel them. It's totally in my head though. Now that I've come outside, there's nothing on me, but things are crawling everywhere. So with our purchase price of 240,000 and our improvement price of 20,000, Meredith and I had a total invested cost of $260,000 to get this house looking like it does now. Nice, move in ready. The good thing is I knew this price was a good price for this house. I knew I had done good on it. I had a realtor contact me and say, Matt, there's this house that the guy was trying to sell for a while and no one would buy it, so he pulled it off the market. So now it's not on the market. And I found out this guy lives out of state, the guy who owns this house. He lives out of state and he has tenants who live in this house and he's trying to sell it. So when people come and look at the house, they go in there and it's a crack house. And so no one wanted to buy it. No one wanted to put in the effort to clean that junk up, except this guy. And so anyway, it didn't sell. And so he pulled it off the market. And then my buddy contacts me and says, hey, he was asking this. No one gave him any offers. And so I was like, hmm, that means I can come in and throw a low offer with no competition and I might just get it. And I got it. We bought it for 240. Put 20 in it. We have 260 invested in it. Now the good part about that is I got it well into market value and it's been two years. So inflation has increased the value of the house even more. So Zillow puts this house at a current value of $379,000. Now I don't know if that's uh, accurate. I know it's not an accurate representation because Zillow has never walked into my house. That is a computer generated value based on other houses, what they're selling for in the area. But they're estimating. I think it's probably close. So right there, we have 260,000 invested and the current value is $379,000. Just off of that, we could sell it and we have made $119,000 in two years, two years and uh, some change of owning this house. But we've also been renting it. We have been renting this house. This house currently rents for $1,750 per month. Times 12 is $21,000 per year. This house has made me $21,000 per year. Also right now I want to put the caveat in that I am rounding everything and I'm, I'm not telling all the details because I want to try to keep this as simple and straightforward as possible so as not to bore you and because every house is going to have a little bit of different things and so I'm trying to make this kind of broad and I'm also not talking about uh, the management company. They took a piece of that $21,000. I didn't put $21,000 in my pocket. They took like $100 to $150 a month so I made about $1,600, $1,650 a month on this house. But I'm gonna call it $1,750 because my other house I manage, so I got to keep it all and I wanna compare the two. So there's a bunch of things that I am not gonna talk about. Taxes, insurance, that kind of stuff. That stuff exists, I know, I saw it in the last video, I was like, I know, I, I, I rented houses for the last few years, I know that stuff exists, but I'm trying to keep it simple, and you'll see why in a little bit. Okay, now this is where I'll lose all the people who are not super interested, but the people who are really interested in the numbers, I think this is really cool, and uh, it's good for you to kind of see why I'm making the decision to keep one of my rental properties and sell this one, uh, why this one is not as good. So we're gonna go through and compare the numbers for both houses right now. And for some reason I wrote this all in watercolor and then it's raining so it's getting a little smeared. This is our first home. This is the one that we did in the video a couple weeks ago. This is the crack, the crack, <laughs> the crack house. <laughs> so my first home, we bought it and put money into it and we had a total cost of $155,000. This one, like you just saw, we bought it and put 20 in it so we have a total cost of $260,000. So already this one cost more, it was a couple years later, but it cost more than this one. Current value, this one has increased in value to $223,000 uh, according to Zillow. This one, like we just talked about, $379,000. So while this one costs more, it's also worth 
move more. It's a bigger, better house in a better part of town. It's a centralized location. It's really nice. You can get to the store by walking. It's a nice location for a house. So the value of this one is much higher than the value of this one. But where it gets interesting is when you compare what you can make on each of these houses every month. This house I can rent for $1,600 a month. The crack house I only can rent for $1,750 a month. Only $150 more than this house. This one is more expensive, it's nicer, and it's in a nicer part of town, so I can charge more rent for it but not a whole lot more rent for it. And I forgot to specify, but just so you know what we're comparing, both of these houses are three bedroom, two bath houses with a little bit of flex space. The crack house does have a bigger flex space area than this house does. But otherwise, the yards are about the same, the rooms are about the same sizes. So we're comparing similar houses, just different locations and a little bit different layouts. So 1750 does sound better than 1600. I agree, this one makes more money all day, every day but let's calculate our ROI, our return on investment, which means we're gonna go off of this number because this is what I could sell either house for. So this means I have $223,000 tied up in this house and $379,000 tied up in this house, and they are each generating me this much per month. So here come some numbers. First home, 1,600 times 12 equals $19,200 per year. $19,200 divided by our total value of $223,000 is a return on investment of 8.6%. 8.6% is good, I'm happy with that. In my area, that is actually what I've kind of come to find is a pretty good number to shoot for. In some areas, you can probably get 12%. In some areas, you can probably get 4%. My area, 8.6%, I'm very happy with that number. Now let's calculate the crack house. 1750 times 12 is $21,000 a year. 21,000 divided by our total cost of $379,000 equals 5.5%. To show you why that return matters, let's talk about a little example with ROI. So if you have $100,000 at an 8.6% return, you will make $8,600 per year on that. Whereas if you have a 5.5% return, you will make $5,500 per year on that. That's a $3,000 difference. So while this house is generating income and it is generating more income, the percent return is not as good. And so if I sold this, and if I took this $379,000 and invested it into something that had a higher return, I would be making more money per year. My money would be working harder for me then this house is working for me. I just took $379,000, the value of this house, and plugged it into my calculator to figure out what I would be making on this house if this house was generating an 8.6% return on investment. This house, if I was getting 8.6%, would be making me $2,716 per month which is almost $1,000 more than what it actually makes in real life. So do I regret buying this house? Not at all. Meredith and I made a lot of money on this house, but it was made in the flip. It wasn't necessarily made in the rental. I mean, it did make money, but like we could be making a lot more. So by keeping this house, we're losing out on a potential $1,000 a month that I could be making if I could find a house with a higher return, like my other house. If I get in that area of town, that type of house, I think we would have a better return on our investment. So the only reason I would keep this house is if I just liked this house, which I do but I don't like it enough to potentially miss out on a thousand extra dollars a month. So, I'm putting her up for sale because we made our money on this house. We flipped it, she's beautiful. But I wanna continue making money on that money forever. Walk through fast, turn off all the lights so the fleas don't get on me, bring back a bug bomb, <laughs> boom, get them. <laughs> so I did not talk about insurance, I did not talk about taxes, I did not talk about damage and um, having to fix up stuff that's broken because that stuff is so variable depending on your location and everything. And for people who are saying, well, like that's all expenses that you're not counting so you're giving a false sense of how great rental properties are. I also am not talking about how much the property value is going to go, where's the light switch? There it is. How much the property value is going to go up in the next few years, like every year in this area, especially my property values are going up. The value of these houses is increasing. And in my experience of owning houses over the last few years, it's evened itself out. So like the value of the house has gone up enough to totally cover the insurance, taxes, and any maintenance issues we've had on these houses. So I am just not gonna talk about them um, because they're so variable. So anyway, hope you understand why I am omitting that and I know, like I know that stuff exists. So people who are like, Matt, you forgot, I didn't. I know that stuff exists. It's just trying to make this video as simple 
as possible. Okay, this is the crack house. I'm gonna throw it up for sale. I've never actually sold a house. Wow, I didn't think about that. I have bought several houses. This is the first one that I will ever have sold. So it's gonna be a little learning experience for me as well. Gotta figure out how to make it sale ready. I'm walking like around in circles just so that fleas have less chance of jumping onto me. I don't know, they're, they're pretty good at jumping, so that's probably not helping at all. All right, that's it. Thank you guys for watching this episode of Off the Ranch and Crack House. I love you. I'll see you next time. Hey, what camera is that number? Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell Mayor.